Hi, thank you for having me. This is such a, a, a great honor. My name is Laura Bushnak and I'm a Palestinian freelance photographer. I live in Sarajevo, but I will soon move to Beirut. Um, I'm going to share my screen here so I could uh, present some of my work. So, as I mentioned, I'm a freelance photographer and I like to divide my work into two categories, uh, editorial assignments and personal projects. For my editorial assignments, I mainly work for the New York Times, where I'm assigned by the editors to cover different stories in different parts of the world, or I sometimes pitch ideas to the editors. I've mainly worked in Europe, the Middle East, uh, and Africa. And I've covered so many different issues that include, for example, LGBTIQ in Beirut, uh, belly dancers in Egypt, the Nile in Egypt and Ethiopia, refugees in different parts uh, of Europe, women seeking divorce in Niger, women taking care of their families in Senegal and Boko Haram in Nigeria. Now, for my personal projects, I've been working on two projects for the past few years. The first one is called Survivor, where I follow the story of Muhammad, who lost both legs uh, to a cluster bomb during the Israel Hezbollah summer war. I documented his life for almost over 10 years to show the human impact of using such weapons. Now, for my second project, which is titled I Read, I Write, and of which I also published a book with, I've spent the last decade documenting stories of women in the Arab world to show how they used um, education to change their lives, but most importantly, to reveal through their stories the difficulties they face throughout their lives and how they overcome the obstacles. Now, the main concept I use for this project is the actual handwriting of the women who took part in the project. So here, for example, Nadia from Egypt wrote on her image, uh, who am I, uh, Nadia Sayyid Sadiq, man ana? And these were actually the first words that she learned how to read, which is identifying herself. Now, um, I, def I divided this project into six chapters. Each chapter covers a country tackling a certain issue that affected women's lives. So the first country I visited was Egypt in 2009. Um, I took photos of women attending literacy classes in the suburbs of Cairo and asked them why they decided to learn how to read and write. Um, for example, here, uh, Ijlal, she wrote on her image that she decided to learn how to read and write because her son brought her a letter from school and she couldn't read it, so she felt embarrassed and this is why she decided to attend the literacy classes. The second country I visited was uh, Jordan in 2012. I took photos of girls attending a program for dropout students. Now, the program provides them with the chance of either continuing their high school um, diploma or move to a technical school. Most students choose the latter and it's mainly because their uh, parents cannot afford sending them back to school. So for example, here Wafa, she wrote on her image, her mom works at the airport. She ends up taking care of her younger siblings where she has to clean the house, cook for them. And her dream is to become an architect. The third country I covered was Yemen in 2012. Now, Yemen is um, 
the poorest country in the region. And I visited the country a few months after they've ousted their uh, late president. Um, the thing is with Yemen, only 27% of girls make it to secondary school and it has quite a high percentage of illiteracy. So imagine the high school attendance and university, um, uh, uh, women going to university. So I took photos of women who were uh, the first members in their family to go to university. Like Aisha here, uh, she decided to get education in order not to count on men with everything and to feel her independence. The fourth country I covered was Tunisia in 2013. Um, and I followed four uh, young women, university students, who are politically active and members in the Students' Union. At that age, you know, you are young, full of energy, hopes and dreams. They believe that they can literally change the world. And it's so refreshing to see uh, such energy with such young uh, women from the region. And my visit came right after the so-called Jasmine revolutions. So for example, this is uh, Asma, where she sprayed her wall with graffiti that said, that reads, the people want to overthrow the regime. Now, the fifth country I've covered uh, was Saudi Arabia in 2016. Um, of course, Saudi Arabia is an influential country across the region. Now, contrary to the belief, Saudi Arabia and the Gulf countries in general don't have an issue with female illiteracy. When I was trying to figure out the angle that I wanted to focus on in Saudi Arabia, a uh, Saudi uh, friend of mine brought my attention to the issue of high female unemployment. Now, highly educated women who go abroad to study come back and have difficulties finding jobs. I was curious to find women to learn how they solve this issue. Like, for example, Ahad, who is a filmmaker. And here, Basma, she has her own company, educational company, where she creates curriculums for schools. And here is uh, uh, Rosanna, who is a career coach. And she wrote on her image, my life is my work and my work is my life. The last chapter in the project is Gaza, where I went in 2016. Uh, again, a friend of mine uh, from Gaza was stuck in Amman, Jordan, while waiting for her visa to go to the UK to do her master's. And she gave me the idea to follow women who were accepted to study abroad, but stuck in Gaza and can't leave due to the military occupation because they have to go through this really complicated procedure uh, of getting the approval from the Israeli government to leave Gaza. So I followed few women who were waiting uh, to get their visa and to go study abroad. Um, one of them is Asma, um, who for me, Asma is really a, a force of nature. Uh, it took her over a year to leave Gaza, and now she's finally there studying and running two jobs to support her family. And the next stage of that project is basically where I'm going to focus on educational reforms, and I will work with a small group of uh, young art students to create alternatives to the current uh, state-run schools curriculums. So this was my presentation. Thank you so much for uh, being with us.